The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. My ministry is dealing with people, talking to people, meeting with people. I receive emails from different people from across the world who tell me about their problems and what they're going through. And one thing I have found is that there's a great deception sweeping across the church. In these days, leading up to the second coming of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, there is a great deception. You and I need to be aware of it. We need to be sure that we guard against it. Because if we don't guard against this deception, it will destroy our lives, it will destroy our hopes and dreams. And most importantly, it will destroy or attempt to destroy our relationship with God. The deception is to do with condemnation, which is one of the enemy's most powerful weapons. So many believers have been deceived to mistakenly believe that conviction of sin and condemnation are the same thing. No, they are not. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin. Satan comes and tries to condemn. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin, but Satan on the other hand comes and tries to condemn. The Holy Spirit was not sent to condemn you. Jesus did not come to condemn you. The Bible establishes that clearly. There is no condemnation to as many that are in Christ Jesus because they no longer walk in the flesh, but in the Spirit. Romans 8.1 There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Do you understand the gravity of this verse? And what it tells me and you? It tells me that there are no conditions for us to meet outside of being in Christ and walking after the Spirit. This verse tells me that if you are in Christ, there is no condemnation. The basis of this assurance is in the phrase, in Christ, in Christ, in Him. When you and I were born into this world, you were born into sin. You were condemned already because of what Adam did. The whole human race from Adam all the way up until this very moment, regardless of race and of ethnicity, regardless of which part of the world you were born in, you and I, my friend, were condemned already. But when the new birth happens, a transformation takes place, a transformation that cannot be articulated by the English language. This is why Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3.3, 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you are not born again, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You are condemned already. But if a woman or a man is born again, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. No, not none. Zero. In Christ Jesus, heaven is your home. In Christ Jesus, heaven is your destination. In Christ Jesus, heaven is your future. In Christ Jesus, heaven is your inheritance. When you are born again, you are a new creature in Christ. You come out of the pit of condemnation. You come out of the pit of utter darkness. You come out of the pit of condemnation. When the new birth happens, a transformation takes place. You are changed. You are no longer what you used to be. Therefore, you must, you must, you must be born again. The new birth needs to take place in your life. I love the subject of the new birth, but this is not my topic for today. My topic for today is the deception that the devil tries to pull over the 
people's eyes. Condemnation and conviction of sins are two completely different things. They are two separate things. Romans 8.1 There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. This verse does not say no mistake or no failures or no sin. You and I know that Christians do fail and do make mistakes. There is not one of us that can lift up our hands and say that ever since they were born again, they have never made a mistake, they have never failed and they have never committed sin. I can be the first one to raise my hand and say that I have made mistakes, I have failed and I have sinned ever since I was born again. You and I know that Christians do fail and they do make mistakes and they do sin. You have sinned and I have sinned and that is the truth. Moses killed a man, Abraham lied about his wife, David committed adultery and plotted for a man to be killed. Yes, they did all these sins. And yes, they faced the consequences of their sins, but none of them were condemned. Not one of them were condemned. They all had to deal with the repercussions of their sins. John 5, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life. Anyone who has the feeling of condemnation should never think that it has been sent by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not responsible for condemnation. It is Jesus who said that anyone who hears my word and believes in him has everlasting life and will never be condemned. Therefore, condemnation comes from the devil. It is the devil who condemns, but he makes people feel as if it's the Holy Spirit behind the condemnation. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is not to condemn you. There is a vast difference between condemnation and conviction. The devil condemns people while the Holy Spirit convicts people. The devil, however, wants people to get these two different distinct things mixed up so that he can keep people in their wrong ways. That is the deception. That is what is setting into the lives of people. People don't know the difference between these two. Ordinarily, you should think that condemnation should make people stop their bad habits or stop sinning, but that's not the case with condemnation. The devil condemns people and stands in their hearts making them feel rejected by God. That is the reason when you commit a sin and you try to pray, the devil tells you to keep quiet. He reminds you of your past. He makes you feel as if mercy cannot be obtained from God. The devil is so deceptive and cunning. He stands against people when they want to pray and speaks as if he's the Holy Spirit. And so the people lose courage to stand before God. The Holy Spirit, on the other hand, convicts people of sin. However, he does not condemn them. Jesus said concerning the Holy Spirit in John 16, 8 and 9, And when he, meaning the Holy Spirit, is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin, because they believe not on me. Emphasis added, the word reprove in this passage is the same as to convict. It means that the Holy Spirit will make people become aware of their sins so that they might repent. That is the difference between condemnation and conviction of sin. The Holy Spirit is clear and specific and he shows you, you did this, you got it wrong here, this, this and this. The Holy Spirit is so clear and specific and then guides you on towards repentance. Condemnation, however, it has blurred lines. You never feel right with God. It has blurred lines. Condemnation points the finger at you and makes you feel guilty. It makes you feel as if there is no hope. It makes you feel as if 
you cannot obtain forgiveness. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin. He will produce a soberness in sinners and make them open up to Christ's saving grace. Don't allow the enemy to condemn you. Hebrews 8.12 For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities I will remember no more. God is not a man and God will not remember your sins and hold them against you. But if you confess them, confess your sins and God will forgive you for them. Don't allow the devil to brainwash you into believing that God is still angry with you. The definition of brainwash, a forcible indoctrination to induce someone to give up their basic, their basic political, social or religious beliefs and attitudes to accept a contrasting regimented ideas. The second definition of brainwashing is persuasion by propaganda or salesmanship. No one is a salesman like the devil. He has sold the idea that God is a begrudging God, that God holds his grudges, that God sits on his throne holding a grudge for 20, 30 years, waiting for the day that he can crush you. God is not like that. If God wanted to crush you, you wouldn't be here, my friend. If God wanted to get you, he would have got you a long time ago. Why do Christians find it so easy to believe in the fact that God sees our sins? I mean, you don't need no one to convince you that God sees you when you tell a lie. You don't need no one to convince you that God sees you when you fornicate, that God sees you when you steal. But we as Christians find it so hard to believe that God hears our cries, that God hears our cries of repentance, our cry to him when we ask for forgiveness. If God can hear you lie, he can hear you pray and ask for forgiveness. If God can see you commit adultery, he can see you crying out to him for help. God is a forgiving God. Don't take up this worldly view that has been created by the devil, that God is an unforgiving God. I want you to know that you are fully forgiven, not partially, but fully forgiven. God does not go around beating people upon the head with the sins of their past. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.